So now let's quickly run the Ubuntu in our PowerShell and see how things work. So now what we're going to do is in our Windows environment, we are going to run the Ubuntu bash commands, right? Kind of interesting. So within your Windows operating system, you are going to run the Linux command. So what I'm going to do in order to start the Ubuntu in your PowerShell, which is nothing but your Docker, you are going to do this Docker run right this is going to run the ubuntu for you and you can actually see that the docker is already running because we use this command docker run ubuntu right so if i just do a docker ps hyphen a we can see that the docker is already running here and there's a command like bin hyphen bash right so instead of actually running this one i'm actually going to run a new ubuntu altogether for you so ubuntu run and I just want to run the bash as an interactive mode not as a daemon process so there is a command called it which is going to run interactive terminal of the ubuntu and I just want to call the bash oops I'm sorry oh my god so instead of docker I just typed ubuntu there so now if I hit enter you can see that we are logged in as a root user for the Ubuntu and now if I just do a ls you can see that we will see the ls commands out there and now let's say if I just do a cd of bin I can navigate to the bin directory and if I do ls you can see that I can see all the folders available within the bin directory and also I can see the different commands like make directory dir cp for copy cat for concatenation gzip on all of these different tools is already sitting in the bin folder right so now if i want to make directory within the oops within the root directory then what i should do is let's say i want to just go to the usr and then if i just do mdir test and now if i do ls test folder out there so now if I just navigate to the uh, test CD test, I just I can just go to the test folder as well. So basically you are actually using the real Ubuntu command out there. So I can use the date command for the uh, Linux operating system, which is nothing but the Ubuntu operating system. I can also do the CP for copy and all those kind of stuff. So these are the different kinds of things I can actually do within the Ubuntu, right? So if I want to come out of the Ubuntu, just do exit and hit enter. You will be back again to the PowerShell of Windows, right? And if I want to see all these log files of the operation that I have did, I can just do a something called docker logs of Ubuntu. I can just type something like this but I will get a message saying no such container running. So all I have to do is just do docker ps a and this is the one with the bash command I just executed. So this is the container ID that I require. So I can just do docker logs of this container ID and hit enter. You can see that I can see all the different operations that I did earlier within that particular container as a log right here right so all these different kinds of operation that I did is available as a log file for that particular container ID cool right so this is how you can do using the log file so this is how you can do all this operation using the command prompt and now we are going to do a hello world using kite Maddox. so I'm gonna flip to kite Maddox right now so this is the KiteMatic. So I have already shown th about the KiteMatic in our first video of this uh, video series. So I have just opened the KiteMatic right here. And you can see that we have this hello world container, right? And instead of just running the docker run hello world, I am just going to click this create button. So it is more like a what you see is what you get. And you can also see that there is two containers which is running. Can you see that? If I just click this, I can see the log files automatically come in right here. So the container log is directly displayed here. 
and you can also start you can restart you can go to the settings and you can see what are the different kind of stuff that I'm doing out there is available right here so don't worry about the ports the generals and the advanced right now but regarding the ports we'll be discussing in our next video of this course but yes these are the different kinds of stuff that you can see in the already running container process as you can see here something like this so these are the two different process romantic agency and stoic Jennings I don't know what these names are but yes these are the different container names and it is automatically generated and I'm going to install this hello world now for this I'm going to click this create button so you can see that it is automatically downloading the container for me again the same thing that we saw in our PowerShell that's what is happening right here so it has downloaded the image and you can see that it is executing that particular container there we go and you can see that there's a web preview and the web preview nothing but is the output of the hello world so you can actually see this in the browser itself you can see that it is opening in the edge browser or chrome browser whatever it is there we go voila your nginx container is running this is what is the very very easiest way of doing or executing the containers right from the kitematic so kitematic is kind of ui kind of stuff and you can actually do the same thing using powershell you can see that it's automatically taking me to the bash and you can do all the crazy things that you are doing in the powershell but most of the power users will go with the powershell instead of going with the kitematic right but kitematic is kind of very very handy while you are getting started with the dockers and understanding how things works right while we are doing all this pulling of container from dockers what has happened just now with the hello world the docker client contacted the docker daemon and the docker daemon pulled the image from the docker hub and the docker daemon created a new container from that image which runs the executable that produces the output you are currently reading which is nothing but the web page that you saw and the docker daemon streamed the output to the docker client which sent it to the terminal or the browser that you are seeing so this is what happened behind the scene well these are the two different ways that you can pull the containers from the hub.docker.com and perform the different kinds of operation right so in the next video we are going to do something more interesting meaning we are going to install a mysql and then we are going to install the wordpress in our docker and then we are going to create a real running website which is nothing but the real running wordpress website and see how things works so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day